Well, hey gang, Marcus D coming at you with part five in this video series on my Great Questions Quest. Actually, this is gonna be part 5A because as I've reflected on this particular topic, the title being The Recreator, I've realized that even um, trying to do this briefly, there's so much um, amazing information that I'm gonna divide it into two parts. So part five is gonna have a part A and a part B, okay? But um, that's all right, because uh, this information is, as I said, pretty profound, pretty exciting, and ultimately going to impact all of us. So um, the title is, of course, The Recreator. And what we're going to do here is provide a vision, a brief vision of the coming new reality um, that this creator God is going to make. And um, also as a subtitle, we could put this, uh, this little statement uh, forward that says, This life ultimately is only about setting ourselves up for the next, okay? So as we get started here, folks, first of all, review. Um, now that I knew there was a high God who had created everything um, and was literally, even at this moment, sustaining it, I knew um, that, uh, well, also I knew that he had, he had communicated. Those are the first three, um, obviously, topics that we had talked about, the creator, the sustainer, and the communicator. And once I know, knew that he had also communicated, I wanted to see if he had told us anything about what his ultimate purpose was in making this cosmos and everything in it, including us. And not surprisingly, through that book that I've already referred to, the Bible, um, he has. And, and so um, one of the things that, that actually in there that he has told us that's, as far as that's very significant is the fact that this present world is wounded. So he's not only going to just fix it, folks. He is, in fact, going to create a brand new one from the ground up. And since I now uh, knew that there was strong evidence that he had not only designed and created every atom, but was actually holding them together, all the matter in this cosmos, I knew th that there was absolutely nothing <laughs> that he couldn't do if he really wanted to, all right? Um, not only that, but he has told us that he's going to do that, and he's also given us at least a glimpse of what that will be like. So we're only going to touch on this briefly, um, but it is by far the most exciting reality there is, as I said at the beginning, and one, it's actually one of my favorite things to learn about, reflect on, and to talk about, and to share. So as we get started here, let's just get into a few things um, for us to consider. Number one, why is this world wounded? doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that it is, but why is it that way? Because there has been a curse imposed on it. Actually, this entire cosmos is under that curse. Science actually now refers to this as the law of decay. And it's why, as we all know, everything in this present reality runs down, wears out, dies, and disintegrates. How did this curse come into effect? Well, God imposed it on this creation because our great-grandparents, Adam and Eve, who were the first couple he ever made, rebelled against him. And just at this point, let me mention something, an important side note. <laughs> I used to think that believing in a literal Adam and Eve was a little crazy. Um, but I did some research on this too. And, and I realized, folks, in spite of a lot of what I had been taught, that there is actually a large number of highly qualified scientists here also who have concluded, based on their studies, that there is no rational expl explanation for how the extraordinarily complex code contained in human DNA, actually any DNA for that matter, could have arisen by itself but rather that some vast unseen source of extreme intelligence must have written it because the only place we know a code comes from now um, is ultimately from a mind. And I don't have time to develop that right now, but um, um, that is something to bear in mind, all right? It's one of the greatest proofs in living systems that there is a creator, all right? Um, so because of that rebellion again, uh, uh, from our great-grandparents, um, what has happened now is there, uh, we have inherited what the Bible calls a sin nature, all right? Um, this is why every human being who is born, who has ever been born, 
except for one, and we'll talk about that more later in some of the future messages. Every single human being who has come into this world, except for that one, comes into this world separated from God with an inherited and an inherent sin nature. And that is why we ultimately die, which is something, by the way, that we were never intended to do. So now, for the time being, we all live in a reality which is wounded, temporary, and quite frankly, inadequate, as we all know on an ultimate level, because it's, it's temporary. We don't last. However, the good news is, this God is going, is rather not going to leave things this way, but rather, as he has told us, he is going to make a brand new cosmos, which are going to be far, far better than the one that is here now. So how is this going to be done? Well, first of all, this current one is going to be destroyed. How is this going to happen? Well, this creator God who is now sustaining the very parts, power, and process of the atoms, keeping them together, is at some point going to let them go. And the Bible actually tells us that when this happens, the very elements themselves will melt with fervent heat. Um, until our modern nuclear age, a lot of people thought that was a, um, a kind of a crazy statement in the Bible until we realized that could actually really happen. Another little um, interesting proof of the scientific accuracy of that book. Um, but anyway, it's going to be the largest nuclear explo explosion um, ever recorded, okay? Um, and people have often asked, well, Mark, does that mean that the people that are around are going to be destroyed too when that happens? No, because um, at that point in time, they are going to have a, any of us that are left, if and when that, well, not if and when it happens, if we are left when that does happen, let me say it that way, we are going to be in a brand new kind of body which will be unaffected and impervious to the destruction of the old cosmos. And we're going to discuss that further actually in part part B of this fifth video session, all right? Um, as a matter of fact, because of this, people have often asked me, Mark, do you believe in the Big Bang, you know? Um, and I often answer, yes, I do, but it hasn't happened yet. I believe in the one that's coming. Um, but anyway, um, why is this going to happen? Because this current world, as I said, it's wounded, but to be more specific, it's old, tired, tainted, wearing out, and will eventually die. So God is going to make a brand new cosmos, a new heaven and a new earth is what the, what the Bible talks about. And this time, everything will be perfect. And this time also, no one will be able to mess it up. How about that? That's good news, right? So let us consider for a moment some of what this recreation won't have. Because folks, um, we get kind of used to living in this reality. It's the only one we've ever known. And we kind of get used to all of, a lot of things that are wrong with it. And we just kind of consider them to be normal, but they're really not. So let's go through some of these things that are going to be removed and we won't have to deal with anymore. Or we're only dealing with it temporarily, let's just say. Or we have the option to only be dealing with it temporarily. We'll talk about that in Part B also. First of all, there will be no more curse. That law of decay will be removed completely. That means no more rust, dust, dirt, decay, and disintegration. Nothing will ever wear out, folks, anymore. Can you imagine that? No suffering, sickness, illness, disease of any kind. <laughs> and hey, gang, no masks, right? How about that? The entire medical profession, folks, will be obsolete. No more hospitals, doctors, nurses, dentists, drug companies, old age homes, hospice, funeral homes, etc. Folks, absolutely no more death of any kind. As a matter of fact, no more gyms, no more dieting, no more vitamin supplements, no need to exercise. How about that, okay? No more need for firemen, ambulances, any of the um, first responder people that we so appreciate in these days. Think about this, folks. All the trash, all the pollution, all the environmental concerns will be gone. No more, no more laboring and toiling, quote, by the sweat of our brows, physically or mentally, to make a living. What tasks we will have in that new reality will be a joy, and we will have limitless capacity to do them. That's just one little um, snippet of what's coming. We'll talk more about that, as I said, in Part B. No more monotony, boredom, same old, same old. Think about this. No more bathrooms. 
No more potties, showers, sinks, no toothbrushes, no mouthwash, no personal grooming of any kind, no bathing, no showering, shaving, haircuts, hair coloring, okay? None of that. Nothing will get dirty anymore. Everything will be clean, new, and fresh all the time. How cool is that? No more vacuums, dusters, mops, cleaners. Um, It's interesting to think and reflect on that most of the dust in our homes comes from us, the decay of our body, our dead skin. Isn't that kind of gross? (laughs) No tiredness, no weariness, no fatigue. In fact, we will no longer need to sleep, folks. How cool is that? No washing machines, dryers, no laundry, no locks, no keys, no passcodes, no more darkness, no more night, no more weeds, no more thorns, no more bugs to bug us, no poisonous ones stinging, biting, disease-carrying ones either, no spiders, ticks, flies, wasps, hornets, mosquitoes, scorpions, locusts, lice, all nasty and unpleasant critters, you know, cockroaches. (laughs) Snakes, all right? I don't mind them too much as long as they're not poisonous, but a lot of people don't like them, all right? Anything that could hurt or eat us will be gone. In fact, nothing will need to kill and eat anything anymore to live. That's something that's part of that curse that we just kind of take for granted. That that was not the way God originally created all this. Think about this. No more hurricanes, tornadoes, lightning, hail, excessive streams, extremes of hot or cold. No earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, floods, landslides, blizzards, avalanches, droughts, wildfires. Folks, we also hear there's going to be no more oceans. Do you ever think about how much space on this planet water takes up? It's a reason for that. Topic of another video down the road, all right? No more deserts, no more arctics, no more mountains, no more wastelands of any kind. In fact, we will have a perfect kind of weather environment beyond anything we've ever imagined. Folks, there'll be no more mental, emotional, or relational stress, drama, heartache, no misunderstanding, no more rejection, ridicule, separation, loneliness, or loss. Furthermore, and and one of the most exciting things is, folks, quite frankly, no more evil, wicked, mean, and hurtful people. No more liars, cheats, and thieves. Murderers, kidnappers, drug dealers, extortioners, tyrants, dictators, people trying to take advantage of others, both in a large or small scale. And folks, at that point, and really only then, will we finally, finally be rid of the need, the absolute need, which we have now, for police and armed forces and our own guns and weapons to defend ourselves when necessary, Um, and those we love from all those people that I just mentioned. People actually ask me, too, about this sometimes. So, Mark, if, if, you know, there will be no death of any kind in that new reality, I mean, and I've heard this, what what about, what about, what if an elephant steps on an ant, okay? Well, let's, let's just answer that this way, folks. If the creator who is controlling the very atoms, if he is, and he is, then he can certainly control any and everything which is made out of them, including the elephant and the ant and the ground that they walk on, right? And folks, I'll tell you this, in that new reality, there probably won't even be atoms as we know of it now. It is absolutely amazing to think about. So um, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to now, in that video, we are going to, now that we've considered what, just a little bit of what we're not going to have, what we're going to be rid of, thankfully. We're going to talk a little bit about what we might have, what we probably will have, a little bit about what has been revealed about it. And folks, um, it is the highest picture of destiny contained anywhere in any religion or any philosophy that mankind has um, ever been exposed to. And it's one of the unique validations that this is truly from the mind of God. And we'll get into that next time. Okay, so until then, have a great day, folks. Bye-bye.